We've just shown you, you don't want to be eating whole wheat flour, it doesn't make any difference. So here it's just one story of how our taste innovations are help, helping people around the world thrive. All it's doing is making them fat. That's what it's going to do. It's not making them healthy. So, so that's what we face. A journal, a magazine which for many of us we grew up on and we trusted has now been hijacked and allowed that and that is completely not scientifically based advertising. And I, I hope I've shown you how, how wrong that is, what they've said. And then just to go on, that associational studies don't tell you anything, but the point of this study is, in this study, vegetarians had, were not protected from colorectal cancers. And the, the incidence of colorectal cancer was actually higher, and I know why it's higher, because they eat more carbohydrates, and carbohydrates are what cause cancer. But, but, but the point is that if your model is that fiber prevents cancer, you will always advise people to eat more fiber because they're not, you're not going to get colorectal cancer. So in our book, in the, in the Raising Superheroes, I said it's surprising how effectively this science has been hidden and in, instead the unproven health benefits of grains continue to be touted by those marketing, marketed as the world's leading nutrition scientists. And there's, that's a direct dig at the Harvard Medical School. And I think the reference will probably go directly to Harvard because I will show you that it's the Harvard Medical School that has broken the rules on associational studies. And they have all these long-term associational studies and they've said that you can, through associational studies, prove causation and you cannot, you never will prove causation from long-term associational studies. And unfortunately, I'll show you how they lowered the bar for scientific proof so low that you can prove anything causes anything in nutrition science. And unfortunately, they led the charge. And they, they will ultimately be held accountable for, because the dietary guidelines are so influenced by the long-term studies coming from Harvard, which are associational studies, which do not prove causation, but which everyone has said prove causation. And that has been wrong. So we refer to these, the make starchy food part of most meals, the dietary guidelines for South Africa. And these, again, presented by an expert for the complainant. And these guidelines, remember which are the conventional advice. So that cereals and other starchy foods form an important part of the diet, especially in countries suffering from poverty, food, and nutrition insecurity, and malnutrition. Now, now that, that sentence needs to be considered. And the question is, why is that the case? Why in countries suffering from poverty, food, and nutrition insecurity and malnutrition are cereals and other starchy foods an important part of the diet? It's because those countries can't afford the foods that we need to make a healthy na nation. That's the important point I'd make from there. It's not as if cereals and other starchy foods are what we should be aiming for. That we should be moving away from them, not towards them. She continues, there's no good reason to limit the intakes of cereals and especially whole grain cereals with, with little added sugar. And that's a giveaway because a cereal with little added sugar is, is a breakfast cereal in the diets of both children and adults. And I would argue that I've got good evidence why you should limit the intakes of cereals because there's no evidence that they're beneficial to health. In the prospective study, sorry, intervention trials, there's no evidence that cereals make you healthier. Detrimental effects on health and the risk of disease have been documented as a result of low carbohydrate, low carbohydrate diets, yes. So now she slipped in an attack on the low carbohydrate diets at the end there. And I would disagree with that because we've discussed that. I'm not sure that there's evidence that low carbohydrate diets are unhealthy. This I put in because when I responded to the complainants and the first response, the complainants response, letter to the HPCSA when the HPCSA wrote to me and I had to defend what I'd said I wrote a two-page or three-page three-page document and I've explained why I didn't take it seriously why I thought that it was someone writing in anger and there was no evidence that she did not provide any evidence that my statement was correct and she provided no evidence that her statement was correct so therefore, I responded as a scientist because that's what I was doing. I'm a scientist. And 
the expert witness for the prosecution said he was surprised when I responded, it was all science. It wasn't medicine. It was all science because I'm a scientist. So I sent a copy of this article as evidence that the, the high carbohydrate diet based on cereals and grains that we prescribe for patients, I said it's not healthy. And I provided this evidence as a little bit of backup to say that just go and look at the evidence and start questioning whether the low fat, high carbohydrate diet that we promote in South Africa is healthy. So this was a document I sent. And I would have hoped that the preliminary committee would have looked at this document and said, Dr. Noakes, why did you send us this document? And given me a chance to defend myself, but I was never given the chance. And obviously you've seen now, had I had the chance, I would have presented all this information that I've had. So my point about showing you this slide is that the preliminary committee was in re receipt of this document. And despite that, they went ahead without consulting me for my opinion and they went ahead and brought this charge against me and with the consequence that we're all here for a couple of weeks. Now, Professor, just to deal with that as this aspect of your evidence. Now, you've said, Professor, that when we look at the evidence uh, and with all the evidence that you've, uh, you've now presented, what would you say in respect of this, that recommending a child to be weaned onto cereals made of rye, wheat, and maize, that that recommendation is irresponsible, dangerous, and reckless. Can you comment on that? We, Advocate Ramdas, as a scientist, we don't use those words, <laughs> reckless and so on. But uh, I would say that it's not scientifically based and that the evidence that it will do harm is very strong. And the evidence I think I presented, because biologically, children should be weaned onto a high fat diet they need the fat to build their brains carbohydrates are a non-essential nutrient you don't need carbohydrates you cannot build brains you cannot build muscles you can't build bones you can't build anything apart from fat tissue from carbohydrates with one or two minor exceptions but that's as a general statement so would i say it's irresponsible to advise children to be weaned onto cereals and grains. I think it's unscientific. I don't think it's supported by the evidence. But again, you, you have to look and dig down and understand the evidence and you have to understand human biology. And if you don't understand human biology, you're going to make the wrong decisions. So I wouldn't be quite as outspoken as you are. I would temper my statement. And I would say that I would love, as I've had the great chance today, to present the evidence that children should not be weaned onto cereals and grains, they should be weaned onto animal produce. And then I would also say that that statement is, is not compatible with the South African Dietary Guidelines for Infant Weaning, which show you must wean onto meat and, and eggs and dairy. Now, Professor, just one last uh, matter, uh, one last issue. With regard to, from a scientific point of view, put a, I'll put, a, I'll put a, a proposal to you and you can respond. That scientifically there is, there is no separate healthy diet for a rural population or for an urban population or for a population in transition. What will be your response? Well, I think that the point I made on the, one of my first talks about the evolution of humans and how our diet has changed. And the reality is we're still stuck with bodies that are two million years old and that's what we we should be feeding and that's not going to change just because you happen to live in the city or live in the rural area the basic biology is the same again to emphasize that we all come from a stock of humans that that was around two hundred thousand years ago and it's what we were eating there we haven't changed very much in our ability to eat from what we were eating there and it does and so Having to live in a rural community versus in the cities and the changes over 20 years, that in geological time and evolutionary time, that's, that's a millisecond of time. It's absolutely meaningless.